so let me start let me go into the word today i just have limited time this morning i'll be teaching on what i call making god famous what a time to be alive making god what making no let me put it making jesus famous making jesus famous you know um a lot of times when i when i interact with believers i hear them say things like they ask a very very interesting question god why so they experience something negative and then their response to that negativity is a question god why why is this happening why is it that i lost my job why is it that i am still single at 40 why is it that i can't have a child so when i hear that question to me the way i interpret it is that you are holding god responsible for that negative um, action you are blaming god that god you are responsible for this thing that is why you're going back to him to ask him why is that safe I sometimes ask myself, how come you don't ask God? God, why? When is good? When is good? You can't. You should cry the same way you cry. Oh God, I lost my job. Oh God, why? God, I got a promotion. Why? Why is it that it is only when it is bad you ask God why? Because somewhere in our mind there is a programming that tells us that the reason why bad things happen to people is because God is not doing anything. And it's a mindset. The reason why I'm, I'm alone is because God is not doing anything. After all, you say you give me a partner, so where's the life partner? It's a mindset. So you ask God, God, why? But the truth is this. God isn't God help me say it well. The only reason why evil prevail is not because God is not doing anything. It's because God is counting on you to do something. Are you with me? The only reason why evil prevails is not because God isn't doing anything, but because God is counting on you to what? To do something. Scripture says that the response of God to the rise of evil is his church. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, it says that gross darkness will prevail. It says trying times, difficult times, it was, he told us, he foretold us of this time. It was as if he just looked at the economy and saw that Tariff has moved. And he told you before from 2 Timothy that trying times will come. So if God pre- preempted you to say that trying times and difficult times will come, it was for you to behave in a kind of way when you express that. But sometimes it just looks as if we have forgotten our Christian manners. Let me use that word, Christian manners. Then we begin to ask God, God, why? Don't you know that God said the, the way he would deal with the rising of darkness in this time is by instituting a body called the church. He says, I will build my church and what? The gates of hell will not what prevail. So the reason why the gates of hell is prevailing is because the church is not doing enough. Are, are, are you with me, someone? And when we say the church, hope you know we're not calling brands. We're not saying harvesters. I'm not saying OOO, PMP, CMS. We are talking about you because you are the church. So when evil is prevailing in my territory. I take responsibility. I say it's it's because I'm it's because I'm not doing anything. It's because I'm not doing enough. I was informed recently that all of a sudden the headquarters of sodomy. I don't want to call the kind of sodomy. The headquarters of sodomy and drugs have moved to Abuja. I say ah. I told my members last week. I told my leaders. I say we are doing what they call. Or project audacious. We cannot be in this city and darkness is prevailing. As one man, we will take over the city. And I told him, I said, we will not rest until this city becomes the city of our God. Yeah. The, 
kind of Christianity we practice is really, really. Huh. I told them in the first service, I said, the kind of Christianity you are, you, are, you are practicing, sometimes it will make God look at you bombastic side eye. I, really? That the only thing you know, see, this is half of the year. The only thing you can brag of is what God has done for you, not what you have done for God. Just imagine, half of the year, and you have come again to ask for more. Oliver Twist. And God is saying, but with all I've blessed you with, what have you done with it? With the job you prayed for, and I gave you the job, what have you done with it? It's as if every time you come to God, you pray for something, God does it for you, and you forget it. So every morning you are new to ask for more. And let me tell you why this is happening. Can I get... Can I get um, some of my protocol people? Just two protocol. Psalm 82 verse 5. Psalm 82 verse 5. Let me read the scripture to you and then I will explain with my illustration. Psalm 82 verse 5. The Bible says this. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning already? No, you need to sound well. Are you blessed this morning? All right. Let's make the people know that we have souls in the house. The people online. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. The Bible says this. If you have the... This is King James. Okay, right. The Bible says this. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are what? Are out of course. So, the, the progression of advancement of evil is seen in this scripture. The first progression is called ignorance. The devil is happier when you are ignorant. So, he, he would ensure that you don't come to church to hear this message. He would do everything within his, his power to ensure that you don't, you don't get knowledge. You don't equip yourself with the right knowledge. And I'm careful to say the right knowledge because there are certain knowledge that you have equipped yourself with that has become a prison. So, the first progression is what? It's ignorance. The second progression is what? They walk on in darkness. Meaning that all of a sudden, you just have affinity to darkness. All of a sudden, you begin to adjust. What was, you know, if you read the book of Genesis, Eve never saw that the tree was, the, the tree was good until the devil has spoken to her and the devil capitalized on her ignorance and the bible says and she looked again and when she looked at it, she said hmm for the first time the look the tree became what desirable all of a sudden they say well ah it's not a big deal now killing big deal it's just to do this small one it's just to sign this contract and we'll pad it you begin to adjust All of a sudden, you begin to accept us. You begin to accept evil. Then the third movement is that what there is a misalignment. Once you get to that point of misalignment, there's a problem. Let me tell you how this works. And I need um, one cameraman to help me. But if you just come, one stand here, one stand here. Yes. So you stand here. You can. Okay. You you can go there. You stand here. So go all the way. This is how life works. Cameraman, focus on him. The first principle is this. Oh God, help me. Okay, he looks good. The first principle is this. What you align to will determine what you project. So this camera is aligned to him. That is why you can see him. You can't see the other person. Right? So the first principle is what you align to will determine what you project or what you reflect. A lot of times, what happens is this. We are not even sure what we align to or what we align with. So we begin to project both the good, the bad, and the ugly. All forms of projection is going on because we are what we are not sure what we align with. Let me tell you how it works again. So this is supposed to be a believer. So believer two, come here. That is 
a typology of the world, right? The other brother is a typology of the world. This brother begins to look at the screen. No, project on him. Just face, face my brother of the world. This brother begins to look at him and say, ah, Omo, I like his tie. It becomes desirable. And because of that desire, the Bible says every man is pulled to his what? To his desires. He begins to move towards that direction. He begins to move towards that direction until he aligns to that ideology. The moment he aligns to that ideology, guess what? All of a sudden, we can't see him anymore. What we can see is the ideology. What we can see is the system of this world. We look at, we look at believers nowadays. All we can see is what? The world. Ah! When did we get to that point where all we, when we look at your Instagram page after we break through the protocol of private, what they call it? Privatization. You are a private entity. When we break through, what we see is an emblem of the world. Right now, people are, see, you don't know how, what, what manner of this service you are doing. The world is looking for light. All of a sudden, what you are designed is to be like the world. The world is saying we are lost. All the earths, they are, they are out of course, but you are desiring to be like the world. Do you know the scripture? The Bible says the church is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral, inferior to the church. All of a sudden, you just you don't even know why. Why you are making up, ladies? Praise God. Be, before now, you were beautiful without makeup. Praise God. You started making up. And have you not noticed when you started making up, you brought it from your friend? Praise God. I'm not talking. I'm not saying makeup is bad. When you brought it for your friends, you started having skin reaction. Uh, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? Praise God. But you now started going advanced, advanced, advanced. Now you are doing body modification. You are modifying what God has made. There, there are ideologies that when we look at, we're just like, mm, where did you get this thing from? This behavior, where did you get it from? What has happened is what? You have aligned. But there is a misalignment in that alignment. Because what you are supposed to reflect is the glory of God. And I say this. If God isn't what's been different for, you are, you are still lost. I will repeat it. If God isn't what been different for, you are still lost. God are those days where we are timid and shy of this thing we believe. God are those days. We must stand and be counted. We say, see, this one, I am set apart. I am not like the world. I am different. They must know that a town hall is different. It's clear. Now you begin to imitate. You look at the world. You try to copy the world. Can you imagine that? You try to copy the world. Meanwhile, scripture says light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend your light. All of a sudden, you are the one trying to comprehend darkness. You go to school to study how they operate. There's a problem. Thank you very much. There's a problem. Praise the Lord. Praise God. God has entrusted us with such a great assignment. And the assignment is simple. It's called what? The Ministry of Reconciliation. It's called the Ministry of Reconciliation. I've learned to live my life for an audience of one that is God this this pressure to please men over God is becoming prevalent let me tell you if the way I think about it is this if my life can't make sense to God why should my labor to men make sense the first, my priority is to have a meaningful life to God. That God will look at my life and he will call it a 
productive investment. With the way you see, God, I'm just really, I'm just really conscious of the fact that hope you know that Scripture wants us that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. He says, "Night comes when no man will walk." This is not the kind of sermon that you know. I say in the first service, you say, "God will bless you." Oh, amen. This is not it. Is the question, what are you doing with your life, O oh God? What? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's really, when you think about it, I hope you know that if this was the Christianity the, the, the way I think about it, I ask myself, this is personal, this is not you. I ask myself, the way I'm living, am I living like this Christianity matters? That my, my belief counts. The way we are passive about a lot of things. It's as if every time they need to compel us to be Christians. No conviction about what we believe. They, they, oh God. This same thing we believe. They are Oh God, when you read through scripture, this same thing, because of this thing, Paul was stoned and thought he was assumed dead. Paul stood up after death. He shook himself up and he continued ministering. This one that any small persecution, you don't know what you believe anymore. All of a sudden, you now begin to beg the devil. Like it's first, you know, devil, can you let the poor people breathe? <laughs> I'm tired. Meanwhile, you, you have the very life of God running in your DNA. I love that last month we spoke about the authority of a believer. When would you stop living the way we live? Can I, can I have my Coke? There's something about Coke today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. If you're online, say hallelujah. You're not online. You're not online. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. Let me show you what it, what it looks like. Oh my God. This is... Okay. Can I get... Can I get... Just come here. Then another brother come. I do a lot of illustrations. So I let it from my father. So just go there. You hold the cup. My brother, stand here. You are the middle man. So this brother represents God, right, in this illustration. Um, and then he entrusts this assignment to us, believers. The first dispensation came true. And this was ministry. He gave them the ministry of the word, the ministry of reconciliation. And they handled it with, they gathered it with all fervency, all dedication, all commitment, zeal and passion. They sacrificed their lives for it. And when they met God, God tasted it, the ministry, tasted it. How does it let me give you a mic? Praise the Lord. How does it taste? It tastes good. How does it taste? It tastes good. Beautiful. When when they met Jesus, they gave Jesus back. They said, Jesus, this ministry you committed into our hands, we are giving it back to you. Taste it to validate if it was authentic. If this gospel we preach was right, he said it was good. But all of a sudden, give him that one. All of a sudden, I better hold this one. Okay, let me hold, let me stay here. All of a sudden, the ministry has come to another generation. I better hold it. And we have allowed, this, is, this represents the system of this world. We have allowed the system of this world dilute, come on. We've allowed the system of this world dilute the ministry that was entrusted to us. A generation has gone by now. And all of a sudden, they are wondering, if Paul looks at what we are doing now from heaven, he will ask, is this the same ministry? We have, we have so diluted it that... My brother, is okay, it's okay, it's okay. 
See this, let me tell you this. The system of this world is aggressive. They are aggressive to water down what you believe. That is why every time they are always attacking. Why are you giving your offering? Why are you giving? Is it your money? When you use your money to buy Rolls Royce, did I complain? I gave it to my God. You are saying it's, it's an attack on what you believe. All of a sudden, you are not you. You now say, God, please give it back to God. God, drink your ministry you have given to me. God says, I, can you even see what he did? He said, if you are lukewarm, what will happen? I will spit you out. We have gotten to that point where we need to pray for mercy so that God will not spit us out. Because we have diluted a lot of things. We have diluted it. What we need is, God ha- has placed us, give him back. God said, I won't fix it for you. My brother, you have to work out your words. Your salvation with fear and words. Trembling. What God is expecting of you now is to say goodbye, word. Let's go. Goodbye. Mm. I've made up my mind for the rest of my life. As you do that, you begin to empty yourself. You say, God, this is not what you actually... I know this. You begin to empty yourself. You come to God, you say, God, this was not, this was not the gospel we received. It was the gospel we received was the ministry of reconciliation, meaning that we are actively involved in reconciling men to God. Meaning that when men look at me, they should give glory to God. They should point that your life indeed is worth living because of God. He says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And because I know my future. And you begin to empty. My life is what the living just. Hold on. And then you say, God, I will sit down this time and I'll begin to bear the kind of ministry, the kind of passion, the kind of commitment. And you begin to what? Refill yourself. You begin to refill yourself. My life must make sense to God. Enough of this dispensation where we are just intimidated by light. How can, by darkness. How can darkness intimidate light? Did you not read in scriptures? They say, who are these men that have turned the whole nation upside down? My life must make sense for God. We must make Jesus famous again. The way I look, the way you behave, you don't trust this thing you received. He said, these things we have handled, we have seen, we have handled with our hands. You can't even tell your you are you are intimidated to tell your your friend what you believe in. What an insult! See, I'm I'm a shy person. That's why I can't I can't I can't win souls. I can't I can't speak about these things. Ah! See, sometimes you when you when you when you understand ministry, it will be like fire caught up in your bones. You will not be you will not be able to contain it. When you contain it, it's because light has not come in. Ah, you Saturday morning, you don't need church assembly to go and win souls. You just go outside, my brother. Hey, 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 hey. the way you are going. Ah, <laughs> I need to save you. <laughs> you, you. You say, come, need if you don't you bring out your cane. You say you accept, you accept now. <laughs> you know why? Thank you very much. You know why? Thank you. Hallelujah. Let me just wrap up. God is counting on us. Like I said in the beginning, God is counting on us for ministry. God is counting on you that you would help depopulate the kingdom of darkness. In your own way. The thing is this. A lot of us may not be 
may not be actively involved in street evangelism but there's a way for you to, involve, to use your, your life the bible says we are written epistles use your life to compel people to god this thing that every time they look at your 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 social they are confused about your bio they don't know are you for god are you for the world what is going on you are in the office you can't you can't even just they have never your, you have you have children your children cannot boast that they've seen you pray before for for 10 minutes what would you hand over to the next generation english the kingdom of god is not the english is in the demonstration of power you must come to that point where you are you are a you are a residue of power your child will know that ah let me tell you the way i learned up that you can win you can raise the dead from you can raise the dead back to life was for my mother my mother was the first lady in was the first woman in my village to raise the dead ah i see so it's possible what would you be a reference point to what would you be a reference point to the one that is always complaining they are begging you to come to church if it rains you don't come to church it must be good weather but if it's your organization you know they're never born how are we taking this walk with god we must be aggressive about soul winning because oh god hope you know that your friends that are close to you all they are waiting for is for you to speak the word of god to them you just be surprised just saying god loves you can't just be the difference for them but you are i said in the first thing i said hope you know that people are going to hell not because of their sin <laughs> are you with me can i get this session and just that's where i'll end just stay here people are going to hell not because of their sin oh pastor oh really oh yes do you know why because god has forgiven their sins already christ doesn't die for everybody when they confess salvation are you with me their sins are already forgiven so they are going to hell with their sins forgiven the only reason why they are going to hell with their sins forgiven is because my brother come god has put you as a signpost and your assignment is just to point people to the way this is hell right this is the way that leads to hell you need to stand there and as they are coming you say "Mm -mm, my brother this is not the way you point them say that's the better part you point them you say no jesus is the way your goodness is not a way to get to heaven if you like be a good person Are, are you with me that's why you'll be shocked you will see some very mean people in heaven uh praise god your work is to be a signpost to say hey jesus is the way what some of you have become they become usher boys you are the one helping them open the door you you open the door hey high five are they gonna club tonight yeah oh we go see no 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 you are they here i won't pray but you they go okay well praise god go see now on his way, he, he, he gets involved in an accident. I'm not saying even, I'm not preaching about club or anything. What I'm preaching about is his life is not found in Christ. You have people like that. Unbelievers as friends. It shows that why we win so is because we want to demonstrate our love for humanity and for God. I love you so much. I love you so much. I can't allow you, I can't afford to see you in hell that's what it is how would you have friends people around you you've never spoken the truth of the gospel to them someone comes to you you want to ah, me will just part their me will just part the budget more just ah more sort them out you understand now huh? you say well i'm not because ah, pastor b has taught us well so i'm not involved but you can go ahead you are indulging them to go ahead what ministry have you received this is the ministry of reconciliation i don't want to get to heaven and my life is a waste you know when your life is a waste it's a function of investment 
is a function of investment. I say this. Thank you very much. As I close. The way we pray most times, we, we act as if the biggest thing God can do for us are these material things. Hope you know that there's no celebration in heaven when you buy a car. Because it's not rapturable. The only thing that God, I, I said in the first service, I said, see, the reason why you're on earth is not because of God wants you to walk. God wants you, you, want you to worship him. Praise God. Oh, pastor, are you serious? Yes. You are not on earth because of God wants you to worship him on earth. Praise God. Let me tell you why. Think about it. In heaven, what do they do? When you get to heaven, what will you be doing? So the moment you give your life to Christ, God would have taken you to heaven so that nothing will even, at least in heaven, there's no divided attention for worship. It's total worship to God. God kept you here for a purpose. The reason why God kept you here for a purpose is not for you to buy a car and house. All those things, he says that they will go to ruin and decay. It will, mat- it will not matter. If you like, be a billionaire. God is not intimidated by your wealth. He says the gold, they are all mine. What will matter is what? Every soul that you turn to Jesus. Every soul. So if you're not actively involved in soul winning, God is saying what a waste of investment. The reason why you pray and you say, God, oh God, give me this material thing. Give me this material thing. And God is saying, the reason why I'm blessing you is not to be an end in itself. It's a means to an end. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm counting on you that through my blessing to you, you will minister salvation to another. That you will be the signpost that God is good and kind to me. I don't know about you, but if you, if you see my life, you see the goodness of God. You say, where have you seen this manner of God? I need to meet your God. It's, it's a very, very solemn message. We need to learn to do big things for God. Praise God. Tell yourself, my life will not be a waste. I do big things for God. My life will not be a waste. Hallelujah. Conformity to this world will impact would would affect your impact for the world. Conformity to this world. We are not born to be conformed to this world. We are we are here to transform the world for Christ. So what you need to do today is say this. You say, What is my role in this end time agenda? Night comes when no man would walk. What is my role when it comes to soul winning? Would I get to heaven and God will ask me, my brother, with all the chisel, with all the blessing, with everything I have done for you, where is the dividend? All this jaye jaye we are doing is not taking us nowhere as a church. See, enjoy life. As a matter of fact, anybody that... The Holy Spirit can teach you how to enjoy life well. Praise God. Christianity is not boring. God made everything pleasurable in his sight. He knows how to enjoy life. So God is not a boring God. But don't allow what is meant to liberate others become their pitfall. Praise God. Today, begin to say, this message, how you know it has worked? Go back, reflect, ask yourself, what am I projecting? Who am I projecting to the world? This message will cause you to at least start to delete some posts. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It should, it should inspire something. This post, this, this message should see you go out, you say, hey, my office people, you, you know, I, I, praise God. Hope you know that soul winning amplifies your authority as a believer. Soul winning is a tool to amplify your authority as a believer. Jesus did not empower his disciples. The way he empowered his disciples is by telling them that through soul winning, when you speak to this serpent, it will what? It will succumb to you. 
It was on the platform of soul winning. However, you want the power, but you don't want to do the work. We need to wake up. Tap your neighbor, say, wake up. The world is getting darker. Say to them, the world is getting darker. Will you not shine the light? Will you not shine your light? Someone say, I shine my light. Say, I shine my light. If you're lying, type it. Say, I shine my light. My light, my light must make sense to God. How can I be? <laughs> my family. All my family now. Guess what? They are 10 harvesters. It's not, it's not like we, we had a conversation. My light must make sense to them. My light shone and is shining. All, all your friends that are evil. Uh, uh, all. When would your light start to shine so that they can come to God? You are in a neighborhood. Not one person in your neighborhood has joined a cell. Not one you yourself. You don't even go to cell. So let me even leave cell. You are in a neighborhood. Not one person has said, "Ah, my brother, I like how you live. Since you have been here, I have not seen seventeen women. The former neighbor here." It's like a slaughterhouse, but since you came here every night, what I hear is shakaba kaba kaba. I want to serve this your God because even that shakaba, my family, they, be, they they are now praying because of you. In your neighborhood, no, you've not won anybody, no influence, no impact for Jesus. What a life! I just moved to one estate, my brother. In that estate, the estate is very private, so you don't talk to each other. But I have people now, they attend church from the estate. I, I don't even do it, so I don't do it. It's a lifestyle. Your life should make sense. Having been blessed this morning. What would you do about this message? Let me, let me, let me just ask. What would you do about this message? Let me ask it this way. Have you reflected, and this message will provoke you to do something. Let me see your hand off. If this message will provoke you, or you want me to say this one, you'll be blessed in the morning. Because, you know, we see these things. The way you, when I started the prayer this morning, I say, it will turn around for your good. I saw it. everybody, shh. Oh, yes, amen. Now everybody, cold water has poured upon all of you. So I want you to use the same intensity as you do. Oh, man, and say, I'm a soul winner. Say it. No, you need to say it like you are in Abbasat. You jump up from your seat and say, I'm a soul winner for Jesus. Say, I'm a soul winner for Jesus. My light must shine. Say, my light must shine. In Jesus' mighty name. Have you been blessed this morning? Let me please have your seat and put your hands together for Jesus.